should be alright with that. Yes, sir. So let's see. Eight, C-C-O-Y? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. What's your date of birth, Troy? 3 26 1985. 85. What's your home address? Boots, the avenue, something's. They need to rename their streets there, sounds like. Uh, what's the sense. zip up there? 80634. <laughs> And that number I called you on, is that a work phone? Yes, sir. Do you have a personal phone? Yeah. I don't remember it since we came last time. That's fine. Right. No we're from Kansas, so. Oh, we are? I have that one memorized. Uh -huh. Where are you from, Kansas? Uh, Elkhart. Mm, I don't know that one. Okay. Uh, my number is 970 238 0358. All right, how recent is that? Um, This number? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think we've had it for. Eight months or so? Oh, for a while. Yeah. Okay. I just can't remember. I can't remember my work phone. Yeah, no problem. I've never written down my picture, so I can get it to <laughs> people to call me. Right. <clears throat> so, okay, so let's let's cover some uh, some timeline stuff here. Yes, sir. So let's let's start with um, start with on Sunday. So Sunday would be the the twelfth. Yes. Did, did you talk to? Um, no, Chris sir. at all on the 12th? I didn't speak to him over the weekend. I seen him on Friday. I seen him on Friday. So that was the last time you saw him well, before the work week. Yes. Okay. I seen him on Friday, and he'd taken off Friday to uh, take Shanann to the airport for Phoenix. Okay. And then he told me he wanted to me to look at his fire stick that he bought. I said, okay. So oh, like he, TV uh, fire stick? Yeah, okay. the Amazon fire stick. Sure. So before um, the work day ended on Friday, he's told me that he'd meet me at the uh, Safeway parking lot there in Fort Lupton. And... Uh, he showed up in their Lexus, and Bell and CC were in the back seat. So he jumped out, gave me the fire stick, and right after he gave me the fire stick, that's whenever Cody called. Cody Roberts, the operator of the mm -hmm. 319, and said that he thought there was a leak in the bypass line. And that, that's on 319, you said? Yes, the 319. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because that bypass line is now locked and tagged out because we've done that Monday morning. Okay. Seed. Yes, sir. And was um, was Sh Shanann, Shanann, Shanann? No, sir. Was you she already taken her to the airport. You already took her there? Yes. Do you remember about what time this was? Um, I'm going to go back to my text messages I gave you yeah, no because he told me he was point he was sitting by the uh, 5.0. There was an orange Mustang sitting in the parking lot. Okay. <laughs> I think it was one of the ladies that, uh, well, it looked just like the one I used to have. Okay. Because I had a red one. I was telling you about that earlier. Yeah. So, and he's a huge Ford guy because he was a master mechanic. For yeah, I remember he Said something about that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Chris Watts. Okay. Okay, thanks. Forward your link. You just sent it there. Okay, right here. It's at uh, 305. Okay. Just wanted to send me the text message. Here, park next to the orange 5.0. Okay, so. And he's driving the white Lexus? Yes, sir. And Bill and CC were both in the back. They were buckled up in their car seat. And uh, he had pulled forward in the parking spot, and I pulled back here. And he was talking to me for, I don't know, like three or four minutes, and he could hear him hollering in there. So he got back in the Lexus, and he backed it up so they could see me. And they waved at me and everything like that. Okay. All right. And so you have no no text conversation, no phone conversation, nothing like that over the weekend, Saturday and no, Sunday? Sir. Nothing. Okay. So Monday morning, Okay. Um, what time do you leave to go to work? I leave, well, I usually leave my house about 6 o'clock. Okay. Is that I'm supposed to be here about 6.30. Here at the office? Yes. So, so did you come straight to the office on, yes, sir, I did. on uh, Monday morning? Yes. Yeah. So 8.13. Yeah, and I actually, I received a phone call from him Monday morning, but I couldn't answer it while I was driving. So you can see in here, it's phone call declined. Okay. But uh, do you have the time yes, on sir, that I'll one? Yes, I'll the time for you. That's what I'm looking for. Chad McNeil, oh, that's Friday, Monday. Chris Watts, right here, he called me. 
Is it the same with time? See, and call canceled because I was driving because okay. I can't accept that. Yeah. And that's 6.43. So you got to, so incoming from Chris. At 6.43. Yes, your work sir. phone and it tracks all that. Well, my, my work phone is set up through my Bluetooth in my phone or my truck. Okay. And with that uh, geotab, it can tell when it's going to tell. Call, okay. okay. Whenever you're driving. And you're going to get busted for that. Yeah. Is that right? You will okay. get slapped. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I came down from Keith Nossage and he's pretty high up in the company. Right. He said that we can't use him anymore. Okay. So. And that's when you're driving out to the site? No, sir. That's when I was driving to work. Driving to work. 623. Okay. So. Apparently you'd gotten to work a little bit after, after yeah, 6.45, I would have been, yeah, been running behind that day then. Okay. Do you remember about what time you, came, you got here? No, I don't. Okay. Can we check my, you guys can run my geotab if that helps, whatever you guys need. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, no problem. Oh. <laughs> Might need that. Yeah. No. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's the important stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you, so you come in the office between six forty-five and seven. Would that be fair? Yeah, that would be fair. Okay, because I always try to hit up the burrito guy that comes at seven thirty. Okay, Gabriel. Gabriel. So, did you get a burrito that morning? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, and he's here by seven thirty. Yes, he's usually here about seven thirty and just a little bit after. Okay. So, when you come to the office, what what's your routine? When I come to the office, I always park on the. Uh, be the north side of the parking lot down here where my truck is now and I walk through those doors I come directly in the doors and then I go into the break room because I break room to the south or the north end of the office is where all of our guys sit all okay. the whole teams there okay. usually and then Luke's office is right down the way so I just always park on the north end okay so you, you come in um, do you get like your assignments for the day to check on well, I come you know, in I pull check. my computer okay you know my work laptop I can check Signet whatever you know the case is usually since I'm a lead or field coordinator, mm -hmm. I go in and I talk with Luke and uh, or talk with Chad because Chad's also a field coordinator. That's Chad McNeil. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so when you come in and check with those guys, what what do you what do you do? You establish your just, food for uh, the day or your yeah, routine for the day? Yeah, topics for the day. I mean, okay. whatever uh, a gentleman needs. Um, I sent out an email last week uh, on Friday night. Tell them that when you start checking plungers in our wells, because they're supposed to be checked uh, quarterly, would be what Anadarko is supposed to require. So a lot of our new guys do not feel comfortable with that procedure. So you know, I just talked to them, see if they need help anywhere. You know, what was going on for that day? And Chad told me that we were going to start the Survey 1029, which is a pumping unit. Mm -hmm. So he'd like to have me out there that day, and uh, we was going to test that back pressure line on the 319 to verify that there was a leak. On 319, let's check what? The verify that there's a leak on the back pressure line. On the back pressure? Yes, the one, the same one that Cody called me about on Friday, sir. I told you I spoke to Cody whenever I talked to Chris. Yeah, okay. That, that's when he mentioned the stain on the ground, is yes, that sir. correct? Yeah, the stain okay. on the ground. Yep. Okay, so so there was a problem with the 319. Okay. Having a leak, is that correct? Yes, okay. there was. Okay. Yeah, in the bypass line, we were able to verify that. So the back pressure in the bypass line? Well, I think they're one and the same. I don't know which one it is. It's the one that goes up on the top fill of the tank to verify because that survey set up kind of weird because it's all older stuff. Mm -hmm. But we have logged and tagged there. It's the first line as you're walking to the stairs. Right over on your right-hand side is that first line because that's where the staining was, and it's at the elbow underneath the ground is where I think the thread's washed out. Okay. So there was oil bubbling up from there, and that's what caused the stain. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> What time do you leave here on Monday? Approximate. Approximately. Um, Brigo guy comes at seven thirty. Might have talked to the guys for like another ten minutes. So probably seven forty. I was on the road. Okay. Ish. So probably. So we call it seven forty-five. On the road. Yeah, I would say so, sir. Okay. So, do you remember that day where you headed first? My first location was going to be to head out to Serbia. 
So, okay. The 319. The 319 or the, or the 1029? No, it was the 319 because they were testing that bypass line because I had the call from Chris here. Let me verify. That was at 643 when I told you about mm -hmm. it. And then I talked to Chad McNeil. And then after that, I talked to Chris again at 7.40 a.m. incoming call because I just left the office. So 7.40 a.m. You had a, was it another call from Chris? Yeah, it was another call from Chris. So yeah. at 7.40, whenever I pulled over to take this phone call, I believe I was at the intersection of Old County Road 37 and I think it's 18 right there where the hell got there it is. So 37 and 18? Yes. I had to pull over to the side of the road and park right in because they're building a new construction there. Okay. The Gracie Horizontals are going in, so the hell got there is, is the old location that held that lease. So I just pulled off the road right there to be able to take the call. How far is that from here? How far is that from the office? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, how far, where you took that call, how far is that from here? From the 319? No, from here. From the office? From the office, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know, you just go right down to 22, you turn on 22, so I'd say about maybe 10 minutes. So maybe I left right after the burrito. Okay. So, I mean, we can pull up my geotab, guys. That way I'm not, okay. you know, over the timeline. Um, so what do, what do you and Chris talk about? What's going on on the field? Because he told me he was at the survey 319 and that he was going to test the bypass line. I said, okay. okay, I'll be out there in just a minute to be able to help you. But, I mean, of course, I'm at County Road 52 and 37. So that's going to take me a while to get out to survey. How long would it take you to get to... Survey 319 from where from where you stopped to take this phone call from where I stopped to take the phone call um, We got to get back on County Road 52 head all the way to Hudson then we jump on I-76 just like Luke took you guys out mm -hmm. of the survey so Probably about another 40 minutes to be able to get there from With drive time, okay So that's why I was telling you the other day I tried I thought I arrived on location about 830 Okay Nine, so somewhere in that ballpark. So if you get that phone call at seven forty, how long did you guys talk? You remember? Yeah, it was two minutes. Two, two minutes. minutes. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, because he, he asked me where I was at, and I told him I pulled over to take his phone call. What the hell got there is, and then he told me he was at the serving at three nineteen, and I said I'll be out there in a minute because Chad was going to have me come out to that ten twenty nine anyway. Okay. So I told him I'd head to that three nineteen. Okay. Was Chris scheduled to go to three nineteen that morning? He told me on Friday, whenever we spoke with Cody. Because Cody, because he was right there, because I took the call on Bluetooth because I was parked in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Whenever he found out about the leak, he said, I'll go out and look at that thing first thing Monday morning. Chris said he was going to go out first thing Monday morning. First thing Monday morning. And take a look, look at, at the 319. 319. Yes, sir. To try to verify that whether or not that line was leaking or not. And I believe he called Cody. When I talked to Cody, he called Cody on Friday or Sunday at 5 p.m., and told him that he was going to head out to survey first thing Monday morning. Okay, so so the fact that he was there already and calling you about the 319 was no surprise? No, I just used it, you know, telling me that, yeah, he was out on location and everything. I said, okay, I'll be out there in a little bit. That was it. All right. And so it took, it took you approximately 40 minutes to drive out there. Yeah, so we're now we're probably, what, eight? 40, 8.30, somewhere yeah, in that range? 8.30, Okay. <clears throat> so when you get out there, who who's out there when you get there? When I arrive on location, Chris is parked by the wheelheads. Okay. Or the wheel, one wheelhead of that location. Yep. Then we have Chad McNeil. When you, when you say he's parked by the wheelhead, where, where is he? Okay. Um, here, here, you guys have a picture of location? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, and I can show you exactly where his truck was parked because his truck was parked where the headlights were facing towards the wellhead. His truck was parked right here. And he draw his headlights. Yeah, his car on there for me. Do you want me to try to draw a car? That is a box. Okay, a box. Oh my, I didn't know I was going to be testing all my drawings. Yeah, right. So which way is he? Which way is he facing? The headlights of the pickup are facing toward the wellhead. Okay, so let's see. So if I do this. Say that his truck is pointed that way. Yeah, well, more of an angle where it's pointed directly at the wellhead. Okay. So yeah, that's exactly. It was pointed. His headlights were pointed directly at the wellhead. Okay. All right. And uh, who else is there? Melissa, 
Parrish and Chad McNeil. And where are they? They are parked right here on location, sir. Just on the other side yes, of the well. The trucks there. facing kind of where we're parked here. Yeah, well, the, yeah. Their trucks are facing toward the exit. Okay. Like they pulled in and kind of circled and parked right here, and I parked right over here. Okay. Are those typical spots to park? Yeah, I okay. mean, this is. I was just pulling up, so we're not in any way because we're supposed to pull up um, where you don't have to back or anything like that. So I usually try to pull around or pull back far enough where I know that if there's a truck parked over here, I can pull around and get away, you know, so I don't have to okay. have anybody move their vehicles or back up, because if they back up, then that sends a designation. Okay. Is that a, a usual place for somebody to park where Chris parked? Now that I think about it, it is unusual. Why, why do you say that? Well, if you're going to test the bypass line, to me it would Where is that sense. bypass line? Okay. The bypass line is coming off your separator, or I thought that... If I'm not mistaken, sir, I think the bypass line and the back pressure line are tied in, one and the same. Okay. And the back pressure line comes off from the front of the doghouse on the separator. And then the back pressure line is back here by the flow line, where it comes in at the header of the separator, where the gas and the oil enter the separator. Okay. And those lines run directly underneath, and then come right back over here to the edge of the tank, where both of those lines come up and on top of the tank. And that leak was in here, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. It was right there by the stairs, right as you go up the, okay. the catwalk. <clears throat> So to me, I'm lazy. If I pull up on location, I would pull up over in here somewhere. I would have took this circle right here and mm -hmm. stopped right here in order to be closer to the separator and everything to be able to test that bypass line. Okay. So by him parking here, he kind of blocks this Yeah, access. No, nobody can circle around the wellhead. Okay. Is, is it normal for somebody to park in that, direct, that fashion? No. I, well, I mean, now that I think what, what's all has happened, mm -hmm. no, but... I mean, at first, I, it didn't even, you know, flag anything for me. But that's where his truck was parked. Okay. So, I mean, to me, no. If you're going to go out there and test the bypass line and that's all you had to do, then I would have parked over here to be able to be closer to this and this. Okay. Plus, I'd imagine you have to get some tools out of your truck. Yeah, you know, crest a wrench, whatever, do whatever. you do to be able to pressure up the vessel. Okay. What tools did he have out? Um, <laughs> whenever I got there, everybody carries a crest wrench in their back pocket. Whenever I arrived on location... Um, he used his shovel to dig out the hole right there at the uh, at the bypass line. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I got there, they'd already verified that the by or bypass line or back pressure line, whichever one that is, failed. And that it was leaking underneath ground because you could see like a little bitty puddle right there. And uh, Chad McNeil went and got his lockout tag out. He put it on the um, bypass line. And I think they did the, by or the bypass line at the separator to make sure it was locked out in both directions so pressure couldn't get in there and feed any more up so we wouldn't have any further contamination. And then after that, Chad and uh, Melissa, they pulled away since I parked over here with Chris. And Chris had went back to his truck to check his phone. So I grabbed his shovel from right here and I walked it back over to his pickup and handed it to him. And he said, no, there's still, a, you know, there's, since that stain's still there and the dirt's already stained, we're going to put that back in there. So then he filled back in the hole, and then he came back over to the pickup. And then after that, he left first because I told him I grabbed the gate. So he got out of here, went through, and then I followed behind him, and I closed the gate behind me. Okay. <clears throat> so when you get there... Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. Yeah, whatever you need. So you get there. Chris is parked here. Yes, sir. I was going to say, who else was there? Already, Chad McNeil, Chad 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 location, and Basically. Melissa Parrish. They Chad were there before me. And Melissa are both on scene. Oh, yes. As. Yeah, <clears throat> Cody Roberts was over at the 1029. Cody was already out of survey, but he was at the 1029 because he was going to start that pumping unit. He said he was already out of survey, just a like, generic ranch or at this site? Oh, well, no, not at this site. Okay. Survey ranch is the way we speak upon it, is consistent of those seven sites on okay. survey. 1029, if you enter the gate from the south, which I'm sure you guys did when you went out there, because yeah. that's the only entrance that they are supposed to allow us mm -hmm. to go through. As you go up, instead of curving back to go to the 319, you continue to go straight. And there's like a little riverbed right okay. there that you cross over and go back into, and that's where the pumping unit is. Okay. All right, so you, you get on scene. Chad and Melissa are already there. Yes, sir. And Chris. Yes. Anybody else? No. Okay. Um, do you see what Chad and Melissa are doing? They were just over there by the bypass line. Over here? Yes. Over here? Yeah, over there by the bypass line. Okay, were all three of them over here? Confirming that. Yes. When okay. I pulled up on location, all three of them were over there. Okay. Um, anything seem unusual? No. Just out no. of the 
ordinary no I well as soon as I pulled up and uh, I talked to Chad McNeil about this because he remembered me making a comment that I didn't even remember um, as soon as I walked out on location I got out of my truck and Chris is usually a uh, fairly decently dressed man he's always got on uh, pretty tight fitting FRs like really you know like he wears area pants What's FR? fire resistant, fire resistant. Okay. Okay. Um, he usually wears that he was wearing a Blue shirt that was baggy looked like he had like an older shirt for him. So it wasn't a fire resistant shirt. It was. It was. Okay. It was a fire resistant shirt, but you know different companies made different styles of t-shirts, mm -hmm. and this is not something that you know I was used to seeing him in. It was kind of a baggy t-shirt, okay. and then he had a pair of pull-on boots. And from every time that I can remember out in the field, he had an old pair of boots that he it was lace up, so the toe was about to come off of. Mm -hmm. And then here about three weeks ago, he bought a brand new pair of red, red wing boots down at the uh, FR store okay. here in Platteville. And he always wore those. So when I seen him, you know, on those, I was like, what, you slung that today, bud? And he laughed, you know, and that was it. That was all it was. But I didn't notice that it was, you know, out of the ordinary. I just figured, okay, well, if he didn't get a lot of sleep last night and he was in a rush, you know, he just grabbed what he had and went out to location. Okay. But I think it was a pair of Red Wing pull-up boots. Because I think the only style of boots he wears is Red Wing. Okay. color was the shirt? It was blue. A very dark blue, like a navy blue. Okay. And that shirt was different than the shirts that he usually wore? Yes. Well, usually he wears, uh, um, I believe, it, yeah, it's Ariat that makes most of ours that have come different down there. They're a little bit better looking. What's the company name again? Uh, Ariat. How do you spell that? I have no idea. Uh, Is that the uh, shirt you were wearing uh, when we first yeah. spoke to you? Okay. Yeah. Those style of t-shirts. Okay. So that's the more formal shirt. Yeah. Shirt. yeah. Okay. You know, they fit a little bit closer and stuff like that. But this other shirt he had, because like you guys had said the last time, he's lost a lot of weight mm -hmm. here in like the last six months to a year. So I think it was one of his old shirts that he had, you know, in his closet. Because I even have some old shirts like that that are baggy as heck. Yeah. So. Okay. <clears throat> so he's wearing his old boots. I would say they're older. I would say they're older because they're not his new ones. And I've only seen him that I've noticed wear lace-ups. And these were slip ones. Slip -ons. Yes. Okay. Because the reason why draw my, drew my attention to him is it drives me nuts if anybody tucks their boots mm -hmm. or their pants inside their boots and the boot deal showing. Mm -hmm. That drives me insane. <laughs> so he had it like half tucked. It was weird because one side was down and the other side was uh, tucked into his boot. Okay. So it instantly drew my attention. And that's unusual for him? Is, yes, is, he, well, is yeah. he generally, He's when generally, you see him, okay, okay. You know, let me see if I can make this one make sense. So generally when you see him in a work setting, yes, he's at least dressed, he, he's put together. Yes, guess, he's dressed appropriate, way to, yes. Okay. And I mean, not, not sloppily. No, he looks like, you know, a field coordinator looks. Okay. You know, because... You know, the higher up you go and everything like that, people pay more and more attention to your dress. Sure. So I always try to come to work looking as nice as I possibly can. I've only got what God gave me. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was always nicely dressed. Okay. And that was just kind of threw me off, so I gave him shit about it, you know. I just made that comment. Mm -hmm. I'm slumming it today, and that was it. I mean, that's as far as it went. Chad laughed, Melissa laughed. That was all. What about his pants? What kind of pants was he wearing? Um, I believe they, those would have been, I think the manufacturer on this particular style of pants is Bulwark. Okay. And he usually wears Ariat mm. because they were a baggier pant okay. than what I'm used to seeing him in. Did you notice anything, you know, besides the bagginess, anything else about his clothing? clothing? No. I mean, that was it. I knew he was wearing a, it had to have been an older shirt back from whenever, mm -hmm. you know, he was bigger. And then the pants and the boots. Did you notice if his shirt was dirtier than normal? No, it uh, looked clean. Pants dirtier than normal. No, you know, they, everything looked clean. There was no stains on his pants. There was no stains on his shirt. Okay. Nothing. Did he seem out of sorts? Was he tired, sweaty? Um, no. I, acted different, more quiet than usual. I know he said he's well, a quiet yeah, guy. He's kind of a quiet guy, but, you know, um, that particular day, you know, I tried to joke around because I joke around with everybody. <laughs> That's just the guy that I am in the group. And, you know, he would kind of joke around a little bit and stuff like that. But that was it. He was, you know, quiet. Some mm -hmm. days Chris is, you know, pretty talkative. You can have an interaction with him. And then other days he's more reserved and he really doesn't, you know, engage with you whenever you do that. Because we joke about things. We, we both watched, watched a lot of the same movies, you know, and stuff like that. 
So we say stupid movie lines, mm -hmm. and he okay. just wouldn't, you know, wasn't replying like he normally would. But I didn't think it was out of sorts at the time because of the fact that, you know, okay, well maybe he woke up like he's tired. I don't know, you know. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys show up there, you mess with the back pressure line. Do you get it fixed at that point? Or we do not get it fixed, sir. Okay. That line is still currently, as far as I know, locked out, tagged out. Okay. <clears throat> so how long are you guys on scene to try to fix that? Um, well, since they'd already diagnosed the problem, we wasn't there in a very short period, like 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm guessing, Okay. that I was there. Okay. Because so, they, they had already been there before me and diagnosed that it was leaking. Mm -hmm. So once it's diagnosed that it was leaking, you guys figure out that you can't fix it right at the moment. Right. You guys move on? Yeah, well, we have to move on as long as it's locked and tagged out mm -hmm. and that line wasn't going to interfere. They wanted us to open up that top field because that location is a Thames location, which it's, uh, the Thames is what helps with emissions, so we don't admit any gas out of the top of sure. the deep hatch or anything. So they wanted that line open, and that's the reason why it was open, because Cody didn't even open that line until last week. So we went ahead and closed it, locked and tagged it out. The well was still able to run because it's almost... Uh, it was almost a load out there. I think Cody said it had about nine foot in it, makes about two inches a day. He said by Thursday or Friday, that tank should be ready to haul. So that's what we did. We left it running. Okay. So, and just so I'm clear, everybody left when you guys left? Yeah, they and, left and then... And did uh, you guys return to the 319 at all? No, sir. That day? I didn't return to the 319 that day. I went back over to the 1029. Okay. The 1029 and pumping unit is where we were. Everybody? Yeah, well, uh, Melissa, uh, Cody was over there because Cody was already at the 1019 prior. Okay. And then Chris pulled I'm sorry, up and I pulled up behind him. 1019 or 1029? 1029. Okay. 1029. I'm making sure we're talking about the right one. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. 319 to 1029. Yes, yeah, so I know. Right. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let me do that one again. So so yes, everybody sir. left. Yes. And then everybody went over to the 20, the 1029. Yes, sir. The 1029. Okay. Yeah, Along with Cody. the last ones on the 319 location. Okay. Because I was standing <laughs> over by the, that valve that we locked and tagged out. And, and Chris and it was over by his pickup. Melissa and Chad got in their trucks. And they drove off and said, we'll see you guys at the 1029. I said, okay. okay. So I grabbed his shovel, walked it over to his pickup. And he said, no, they're still standing on that ground. So we need to cover that up. So he covered it up. We got the truck. I told him I closed the gate, he left, and then I left. What's the point of covering it up? Just covering I'm curious. Up, well, if a state inspector comes out and they find, like, a puddle of oil right there, then that would be a, a fine instantly. Okay. But if there's this standing on the ground, then you have a chance to investigate what happened. So we're still going to get the line fixed, but until the line was fixed, they wanted the line covered up. Gotcha. Just curious. No, that's fine. <laughs> All right. So you guys leave, go to the 1029, yes, sir. and do you guys stay there for the rest of the day? I was there for almost the rest of the day. I didn't leave until around 2 o'clock. Okay. What about Chris? Um, Chris, I'm, I'm thinking it's about 11 o'clock to noon. It's whenever, because he kept getting phone calls mm -hmm. from a lady that was at the house, ringing the doorbell and everything like that, and couldn't get a hold of Shanann. Because she tried to call her, I guess, several times that morning, and said that she'd missed the uh, doctor's appointment or whatever that she had, Okay. so he was worried. He told me that he was getting worried about it because could, nobody could reach her. So about 11 o'clock or so, he told us he was going home. But when Chad and McNeil and I talked, I mean, I don't know if this would be anything that you guys could look into further for um, any kind of evidence or anything, but he told us that he had to use the restroom on the 1029. So he told me it was number two. So he told us, well, I said, let's go over there by that tank at the 1029. Mm -hmm. So he backed his truck into the uh, sunflowers at the 1029 and used the restroom. Okay. I mean, that's not out of the norm for us because we don't have porta right. potties yeah. out there. But, I mean, that is something that he did do on that location. Okay. When did you and Chad kind of discuss things? Um, well, I spoke with him again today. Okay. He's like, you know, you want to make sure that you bring that up to those gentlemen in case it can't help anything. Right. Because I, I talked to Chad and I talked to Luke and told him that I was going to be coming in today. Okay. You know, because, I mean, Chad's the other field coordinator, so mm -hmm. I was keeping in the loop with him, and I called him because Luke didn't answer the first time. So I just wanted to call Luke to let him know that I was coming into the office today to do an interview with John. Okay. Okay. Can we back up to the 319 for a second? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, when he was, was he looking around, just get kind of the surroundings at all? Did well, you Okay. Whenever he got back, whenever we got ready to get back in our pickups and leave, 
he was messing on the phone, you know, like texting or whatever. I don't know if he was texting the lady that was at the house or whatever the case may be. It didn't seem odd to me at the time because I thought he was walking toward the back of his pickup and before we leave location, we're supposed to do a circle check, a 360 circle check. That means you walk all the way around your pickup to verify that there's nothing in your way so you don't hit it. So whenever I, I seen him walking, he walked just right past his truck, just a little bit, not very far, and looked out in the field like that, and then he walked right back. And that was it. But did he do a full check, or did he look at a specific point? No, he didn't look at any specific point. It was like his eyes were just kind of up in the, in the like looking toward the sky. Okay. He just had his head up and just kind of looked around like that, and then turned around and walked right back. So was he looking out into the field, or yes. was he looking back he was up looking the out into the field, to the south? I, yeah, that would be. The, I guess that would be the south. I get confused because I'm not. Yeah. It's okay. towards 76. So all right, south south is that right way. here. Yeah, he walked right past his pickup, just a little ways, not like super far. But just right past his pickup because mm -hmm. I thought he was doing a circle check. And then he looked out, just looked across the field real quick, and then he walked right back to his truck and got in. So was he, was he off the off the pad out here in the weeds? Yeah, well, yeah, because the way he parked his truck with his tailgate, mm -hmm. his tailgate was right kind of by the weeds. Right back here? Yeah, right back here. Okay. And, he, and he's looking off in this direction, is that? Yeah, he was looking off in the, well, yeah, because he walked right past here. And he was looking back in here. I mean, it was just brief. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was staring or nothing like yeah. that. He just walked back there, kind of glanced around, and then walked right back to his pickup. Okay. But if you're doing a, a safety check, you should be looking Yeah, here, if you're doing a circle check, here. you should be walking right next to your pickup. You check your wheel wells and everything. Yeah. You verify that there's nothing there or anything behind you when you go to back up, you know, that you're going to hit because we have a lot of operators hit fixed objects. I'm sure. So, yeah. <laughs> I would be one. <laughs> it's a big deal. So. I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything out here that would be of interest at all? No, because I mean the well pad for this site is just right here. Okay. This is just fenced off right out in here because there is a fence around this mm -hmm. whole entire location and then the gate right there and we're supposed to keep the gate closed because the landowner or the gentleman that rents the ground doesn't want his cattle inside this, you know, right. doesn't hit any valves or oh, anything yeah. like that. So that's all there is right here because the wellhead's here, your separator's here, your tank's here. That's the only thing that we mess with right there. Okay. Fair enough. And then uh, when you got to the site, uh, I think you said he had a shovel and he was already digging? Well, no, the shovel was already, whenever I got to the 319, mm -hmm. they'd already dug it up. Okay. His shovel was standing right next to the, uh, um, the freaking catwalk. So whenever I walked up, his shovel was right up here. Okay. And the hole had already been dug How right there. Um, that big ground? How deep? Um, eight inches. Okay. Maybe eight nine inches, because I don't think the lines are very deep underneath that berm, and that before they elbow and then come up right there by the tanks. Mm -hmm. So you could see a little puddle right there of oil, but that big around, and that's it. Okay. Did Chad or Melissa have shovels out too? No, not that I know of, because I think uh, Chris had already done that, because okay. that was the only shovel that I seen that was out of the pickup on location. Okay. Did Melissa or Chad have any other tools out? No, everybody just carries their pressure wrench. So that's our thing. As soon as we get out of the truck as operators, 90% of our job will focus on a 12-inch crescent wrench. Okay. So I always carry that in my back pocket even when I hop out because, you know, we use them to change or turn the wing valves on the well head, the inlet valves, the separator, the dump valves, everything. We use the 12-inch for everything. Okay. So if you jump out of your truck without the crescent wrench, it's kind of like you're useless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always give everybody, all the new guys heck whenever they jump out. I was like... You haven't been operating very long, have you? Because you forgot your crescent wrench. So they go back and get it out of their pickup. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And then, so Chris is getting phone calls and texts. Um, can't find Shanann. Right. And he, he says he's worried about her. And then he, he leaves at some point. Do you remember about when that was? I would say between 11 and 12. Okay. Somewhere in that time frame window. I don't remember exactly. I know where I watch, but... You know, I didn't think anything was out of the norm yeah. at all. So no. I didn't, you know, attribute that to anything. Yeah. And how far is it from the 1029 to the 319? Um, 1029 to the 319, like five minutes. So it's pretty close. Ten minutes, yeah. It's not that far away. I mean, you have to take that road, go out back out of the 319, then you head back toward that original gate. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you hit that intersection where you turn and go to the gate, you can turn right, and then you head up that hill just a little ways. And then, like I was telling you, that riverbed, and you cross the riverbed, and the 1029's right there. Okay. So all those wells are 
pretty short driving distance from each other. Yeah. Right. Okay. And to your knowledge, he didn't go back to the 319? No. But Chad and I were staying on location at the 1029 because we had to call, um, I think, Steve Ergonati, and he shoots fluid levels for us because we had that pumping unit going for almost two hours and the stuffing box was heating up and the polish rod because there was no fluid. It wouldn't bring any fluid down the hole. So I don't know if something's happened down the hole with the pump, but um, the stuffing box is right on top of, or right on top of the wellhead. And as soon as that thing heats up, you have to keep spraying it or putting grease on it or anything like that to keep it cool because as soon as you burn those rubbers, if any fluid does come up, then it would go all over the place. Sure. Yeah. So we had to shut the unit down, change out the stuffing box rubbers, and then we gave uh, Steve or Ert Ergonati a call and he has a uh, echo meter type deal where he shoots a uh, nitrogen into the back side of the casing so you can see the fluid level hmm. so well, actually he shot it into the tubing but you can see the fluid level on his computer because it can tell you that sound wave that runs down the well it'll tell you where all the callers are and everything and I stayed out there while they shot the fluid level okay <clears throat> all right so you work on the 1029 for the rest of the day Yes, and about 2 o'clock I left. Chad was out there longer because he was talking to Steve. Okay, and you left, and did, what did you do after that? I left and went straight back toward, um, like, Hudson mm -hmm. and everything so I could come back into the middle of the field. That way I could be there if anybody needed anything because being a field coordinator, you have to wait until everybody leaves the field and everybody checks out to make sure everybody makes it home safe before you can leave the field. So then as soon as the last person checked out, I can give you the time on that too. Yeah. when he was leaving the field. So I put Chris's out as well. Okay. Everybody have a good evening. Okay. <clears throat> you scroll up to the beginning of the day? I understand that. Oh, yeah, that's like, fine, uh, sir. No. When you check into a site, too, you most people will use the group me to say, hey, I'm here, or I'm over here. Okay, that's Saturday, cases. Sunday, because this is Victor Zambala. You work the weekend. Okay. All right. And then Cody at 6.30 or 6.28 a.m. in the field. Yeah. But we're out in the field, I don't know. Um, Luke's saying that Alex is on PTO. Okay. So Tony or Robbie to please cover that route. And I got a 02 hit at 11.21 uh, a.m. on my gas monitor. Okay. Because I was getting um, a pipe wrench out of my toolbox. And if you stand too close to that exhaust while your truck's running, oh, yeah. it'll give you a hit. <laughs> so the IOC <laughs> called me three That's times. sensitive. Oh, yeah. Wow. They had to call me three times because now anytime our monitors ding or we get a hit, yeah. the IOC calls to verify that we're okay. Mm. Okay. And then, okay, okay. Would it be unusual for people to not check in on grouping? No, not all the time. Okay. I mean, if you're out in the field, and as long as it's usually after 6:30 ish, um, Alex Ray he'll always send a message whenever he's out in the field, and usually Alex gets out there real early, like 5:30. He's almost like my alarm. <laughs> he sends a message whenever he gets out to the field, but he was off all the way from Monday till Thursday, I believe. And that's on uh, Luke's calendar down there if we need that. <clears throat> okay. What about for Chris? Does he usually check in? Um, no, usually he comes to the office. Usually he comes to yeah. the office. Because usually we just see all each other around the office because he usually carries a big red jug that he fills up with water every morning. It's about yay big, and he always gets water at the uh, ice machine down there in the breaker. So for Monday, would it have been unusual for him to not stop at the office first? Well, he told me on Friday that he was going out to the 319 right. to check out that leak. Okay. So... We didn't think anything of it. Yeah, but just overall, is just that over, yeah, because he always comes to the office. Okay, you know, always or I would say pretty much always. Okay, you know he's he's there because that's where him and I meet because we're both field coordinators and he'll, you know talk to me about any issues that we're going to have on the field that day or what we need to do. Okay, so we'll just go over that and then we'll head to whatever locations we need to. But I always meet him every morning down there in the break room. Why was, you know, why he was so quick to jump on this 319 no, to go check it? I don't. 
me because we're always we're all the way back at Friday. Right. And he's talking about, hey, I'll go Monday and do it. Right. No, and Cody's like, okay. You know, because Cody's the operator out there, so. And why, 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 why wasn't Cody fixing it? Well, Cody found the stain, and Cody found that stain later on in the evening. I can see what time on Friday Cody yeah. called me. Yeah. And he said he was going to run back to a couple different locations and get, or back to at least one of the locations out there where he had some uh, oil gator. Mm -hmm. And that's just some stuff that we can mix in with the, uh, um, the ground, any kind of oil that sets in there. And that'll help break that stuff down and everything and um, remediate that stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. Would it be typical for somebody to declare ahead days out, like before the weekend um, starts, that, hey, I'm going to be doing this, or would that usually be something you do the well, day morning of? Chris has said since he lived on 52, right off Highway 52, that it's a straight shot from him to leave his house, go straight to Hudson, and jump on 76, okay. and go out there and verify it. And usually when we verify a line that's got a leak, we usually have more than one person out there. Okay. That way if we do send pressure to that line, one person could be here verifying, the other person could be at the separator sending the pressure. That way, if there is a leak, we can hurry up and shut it off. Okay. That way we don't have excess contamination. Mm -hmm. Right. And... Yeah, that makes sense. Whenever Cody Roberts called me the last time, because I called him and asked him how it was going, and then he called me again whenever I was in the parking lot on Friday of that, that week. It was at 3.13 p.m. Whenever Cody Roberts called me and, and identified that there was a leak out at Survey Ranch. Or at least at the time he suspected that there was a leak. Okay. And I told him, don't worry about it, dude. It's Friday, you know. We'll double check it on Monday. We can go out there on Monday morning and verify. And that's whenever Chris said, I'll go out there on Monday morning. Okay. So. Is he usually one to volunteer for something like that? Yeah, usually he is. I mean, he's really good about doing that stuff. <clears throat> Let's go to. Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday morning, tell me what you do. Tuesday morning, I come into the office, meet with the group, you know, talk about whatever we got to do that day. Um, I know that we were going to, we had training set up to go because Luke sent out a message for training that we had to have at the Aquaterra State. So I went to the Aquaterra State. First? No, not first. Um, I'm trying to pull it up for you. Sure. Okay, we're still on Monday. Let's go to Tuesday. Do you have any contact with Chris on uh, Monday evening? Monday evening? The text messages I gave you. Yeah, I think uh, I just, just asked him how he was. Okay. Uh, Chris was pretty short, or just saying. Yeah, none of his replies were very long. No. And then Luke sent out in the group me that morning at 6.31 that Chris would not be in that day. 6.31? Yes. Because I guess he called and talked to Chris Tuesday or Yeah, Tuesday morning. Who did? Luke okay. Apple. Luke, yeah. Okay, they ordered an air compressor. Everyone meet me at the Aquaterra State, 1836 at 11.15 p.m. for some training. Bring your Mod 1 books if you have them because we've got to complete our Mod 1 before November for any uh, APC blue badges. What's a Mod 1? A Mod 1 is a general knowledge of all your parts, moving parts, your separators, your pumping units, your ECDs, your gas compressors, your BRUs, your BRTs. So they want you to be able to go out to a location and walk them through every step on how that functions. So I tested out <coughs> last year, last year at the beginning of this year, on it and if you didn't get a two all the way around then you would have to turn around and redo it so the ones that i missed were going over some of that and luke had another meeting that day so we were able or he had to have a phone call at one o'clock so we saw that location and we went over the air school so aquaterra states not anywhere all right so monday morning i'm sorry tuesday morning you came here yes um Got your burrito? Yes. <laughs> All right. And what, what do you do? Do you hang around the office, go check stuff? Well, I hang around the office for a little bit, just talk to the guys. And then after that, um, I'm trying to remember, honestly, if it was Tuesday or what day it was. Victor Zambala was having trouble gauging the tank. 
So I went out with him because he's one of our new guys. He's having trouble color cutting. And that was at the Canon 6768. And where's I that one at? Um, right off County Road 22. So fairly close. Yeah, County Road 22 and 31. Okay. So um, I'm trying to remember whether or not Tuesday, because Tuesday you guys had me come back, I believe, to the office. I think we mm -hmm. spoke Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Wednesday. Out? Okay. Well, okay, I got, no, I got a call from the officer in Frederick, but that was at 2 o'clock or something like okay. that. So I know I either helped Gage Tanks or something that morning, and uh, I told him that we needed to head to training, so we headed out. Or did I go with Daniel Barr? I don't know. If you guys pull my car to site, you guys can tell exactly where I was. I was either with Daniel Barr or Victor Zambala that yeah. day. Okay, and then you go to the training. Yeah, we go to the training. What time was that? Training. Well, that one, we had to be there by, I guess, what, 11.15, is that what I said? Yeah, I think that was what you said. Yeah, 11.15 for the Mod 1 training. So I show up at the Mod 1 training. And where was that at? Uh, the Aquaterra State. Where's that at? Um, Aquaterra State is, I don't know what the intersecting county road is, um, but 47 and 4, and then you go east a quarter and south into. Okay, how so, far is that from here? Uh, it's on the other side of Hudson. So oh, it's a go. ways. Yeah, it's only on the side. Like, if you take 52 out, like you're going through Hudson, mm -hmm. straight through Hudson, the first road right outside of Hudson, if you're heading to the east, is County Road 47. First dirt road that goes south. So you take that dirt road, go south all the way to County Road 4, and then from 4 over about a quarter of a mile, and then south into. Oh, okay. Is that like a training center for you guys? No, that's just a vertical that they wasted a lot of money on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's built closest to the HD sites. It's the only site that we have in the field that has pneumatic air, okay. where all the dumps and everything are run off air compressors. So that's the reason why he went there to train us, because he wanted to go over the air compressor portion of the training. Okay. So how long does the training last? Um, almost until 1 o'clock, because Luke had 15 minutes until he had to be on the phone whenever we were wrapping up. Okay. <clears throat> so what do you do after you leave the training? Okay, there from that point... You know, I've got everything here going through my head, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Because it's been since Monday since we've heard anything from Shanann. Okay, all right, wait, wait, let me stop you there. No, you're fine. So you said you got everything in your head. What? Tell me what that means. Well, everything that's going on. I with, mean, with? Yeah, well, Chris took off okay. work, you know, and I'm worried about his wife and his kids because I've known his wife and his kids, you know. I've been over, hung out with Shanann, hung out with Bella and everything, so I'm like, what's going on here? And he's been real short with me on text messages, mm -hmm. you know, and there's been no news updates. I've been seeing, you know, stuff coming out that people are looking for me and by sharing it on Facebook. So I was like, well, if nothing else, it's 1 o'clock. I don't have anything else to do. I'll head back out toward that, three, or that 319 okay. and, you know, see if I see anything out of the norm and stuff like that. And that's the same time that that officer called me. So what prompts you to, to want to go to the 319? Because that was the first location we were at that morning. Okay. Just... Because or yeah, something's tripping your suspicion here, obviously. Well, I mean, honestly, because I see him in a different clothes, okay? I see him in that. And then, you know, and he just was short with me that day. Okay. You know, he wasn't really, like, engaging in conversations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, 11 o'clock to noon, his wife's gone, you know, mm -hmm. supposedly. And, he, you know, he thought that she went to a friend's house or whatever. I'm like, this is, you know... Even in my head, it's not adding up. So you've been thinking about this quite a bit as, yeah. as well, I, I Monday love my went along. And work with. They're all like my brothers. Yeah. You know, honestly. You, know, you can ask my whole group. I would do anything in the world for them, you know. I'd be there for them. They can talk to me about anything, you know, and everything. And I was like, man, this is just so weird because they're such a picture-perfect couple. And then all of a sudden, she's just gone, mm -hmm. you know. And that didn't make any sense to me because by then we'd heard that the cell phone was there, the kids' medication was there, the purse was there at the house, everything. And Shanann and the girls were gone. That didn't make any sense to me. Okay. Because Shanann lives on that phone because that's what her business is, is that phone. Mm -hmm. Right. So I drove out to the 319, <clears throat> and as soon as I went through the gate, the gate was already open. There was a water truck driver on location. Okay. And from MPT, and I signed his JSA. So I parked out by the wellhead, and I didn't want to alert the guy that I was, you know, out there looking for anything odd and suspicious or anything like that. So you I know what time that was? Um, I, it was around 2 o'clock or so I okay. arrived out there, and I talked to the gentleman and everything like that. And 
I told him, I was like, well, I think, you know, I might have forgot a crescent wrench or whatever, because I didn't want him to tell him, because I, I didn't know if I should look around the field or what I should do. So that's what I told him, okay. you know, and then I signed his JSA, and I turned around and looked at the clock, and it's like, it's so freaking late that by the time I get out of Serby Ranch and back to, um, you know, the area around like County Road 22 and, you know, 37, kind of like a baseline, if somebody needs me, then I'm going to be way too far away. So I went ahead and just got back in my truck after I signed his JSA and left location. Okay, why did you sign that? Because I'm supposed to. Okay. What is I it? have what to is, sign that what JSA. Is JSA. Job site analysis. Okay. So these uh, contractors that work for us, so they pull up on a location, they pull a tank, which he pulled the open top water pit. Is what he pulled. That's what he was hooked up to. So this, this water truck driver, do you know who that is? No, sir. I don't know his name. Okay. But I did sign his JSA. Okay. Did you know what this is? I signed electronically. He just handed it to me and said, sign this. And it says JSA. So you're supposed to go through the steps in order to pull procedures. Yes, that's exactly what that is. Okay. So this this thing here has a list of all these questions. Of, and who filled all this out? He would have. He did? Yes, sir. Okay. And yeah. this is something he fills out every time he goes you're on supposed site? supposed to. Every time you go, well, not every time you go on a site, but if you're pouring a little water, you know, like if they're just driving up on a site, they don't have to pull them out. But if you're doing any kind of work that's outside the realm of normal activity, but for them, that's their job. So they are required to fill out a JSA for Anadarko. Okay. So they have to fill out the JSA and they have to go through their job steps and everything. When we pulled up, he had his vent line and everything in the right direction. You know, he had it bent away from his truck, you know, and the wind wasn't blowing toward his pickup or nothing like that. Where is he parked when you get here? He is parked, okay, your water pit's right here. Yep. He is parked right here. Is that a normal place for him to park? Yeah, that's a normal place, I would say, for him to park so he can, because I believe you have to go over the top to pull these open top pits. So he would just put his load line inside that pit right there and then pull out the sludge. Okay. And he was hauling this load to the OPF. Where? The OPF, the oil polishing facility. Okay. Where's that at? That's on County Road 49. Okay. Where do you park when you pull up on Tuesday? When I pull up on Tuesday, I went right by him, right over here, and I pulled up right about here on the location. Okay. And then he walked over from his pickup before I ever even got out of my truck, and he was right here. And I signed the JSA right there. Okay. Did he ask you what you were doing? Yeah, and I told him I was looking for a crescent wrench. Okay. But that was bullshit. Well, I didn't, just because things have been so out of sorts, I wanted to, you know, to go out here to see if I seen anything because I'd spoken to the officer too. Okay. What do you, you remember what the officer's name that you spoke to? Um, I, it's, I got a voicemail. And I spoke to him at like 2.04. But, you know, things in my head weren't adding up correctly mm -hmm. in my eyes. So I do have a voicemail from him. Walgie, W-A-L-J-E of the Federal Police Department. Uh, 
these playoffs. Yeah, really. Sure. We call the police department. I'm currently there, or uh, currently here, I should say. Um, and I can talk to you at the office if you feel more comfortable calling that number. Uh, but again, my cell is 303 500 4073 in case I have to leave. Thank you. Good night. Right, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you know that the water guy was going to be out there? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. No, the water guy was out there. Well, Cody Roberts told me that he uh, was going to have the load bottomed out at Surrey. And then he also told me that the load line was leaking on the tank. Okay. Because that load line is leaking on the tank that was almost full. That was there. on Tuesday? Or was that another day? <clears throat> I think it was on... Um, Tuesday, and he called me and told me that they were going to have that uh, pit bottomed out. And I think the water truck drove me, told me that he got like 15 or 20 barrels of oil out of there, or not oil, but water, and then he pulled the rest of the oil and stuff, the BS and w that was on top of the tank. Okay. So is it normal for you to sign this? If you if you show up on site when they're on site, they yes, you, you have sign to that. sign that. You have to. To. Yes, sir. Okay. So he's so you pull up around here, yeah. Or, yeah, approximately here. Yeah. He he comes over before you're even out of your car. Yeah. You, I'm you trying to get out of my pickup. Okay. Do you ever get out of your pickup? Yes. Okay. Well, do you, do you walk around? Take a no. Walk? I mean, whenever I get out of the pickup to talk to him. Okay. Because he's walking, you know, he's walking up and he's right here by my truck, so I get out, you know, and everything, and talk with him. And then he told me, you know, that he's here to pull a load and everything like that. And I need to sign his JSA. And the screen is scratched to hell on that JSA. <laughs> sure. He couldn't read nothing if he wanted to. So I input my name. And then I asked him, I said, where do I sign, sir? So I handed it back to him. He handed it back to me after he got me to the screen where I needed to sign. And then I signed my name. Okay. All right. Then, so does he leave? All right, I'm sorry, go back to his truck? Yes, sir. He, okay. he went back to his truck. Uh, and then what do you do? I get back in my truck. Because then I looked at the clock and it's already freaking like 2.04 around that time period. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back in my truck and I just leave location. Okay, so you weren't there for, what, five, 10 minutes at I most? Wasn't there for, no, sir, I wasn't there very long at all. Okay. And the gentleman told me that if he found my crescent wrench, that he would lay it up on, you know, the battery or the tank or the separator for me. Okay. So. All right. Did you, did you have a chance to look out in this direction at no, all? No, sir, I did He was just on you that quick. Yeah, he, I mean, he was just right there next to me. So okay. I was like, okay, and that's good too, because they're supposed to be able to approach people. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as they get, as soon as they see somebody pull up on location, they will approach you. Okay. You know, they're supposed to, and that's what they're supposed to do. So I wasn't shocked to see him or nothing like that, but he was yeah. just right there at the pickup. So I signed the JSA and, you know, because in my heart of hearts, I didn't want to believe that Chris had done anything. You know, I've been his friend for two and a half years, mm -hmm. you know, but with Shanann not getting back to anybody, you know, even like calling her parents and just being like, hey, you know, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm safe and sound. Bella and the kids are with me. We're good. You know, I was at, that was the location that he was at that morning. So that's why I went out there. Okay. Because, you know, everybody's looking for clues and tips, anything that can help. And I honestly just want to help. And something, really something's did. needling you about this. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, you know, I didn't say it in our first interview, but the clothes. Mm -hmm. The clothes, it was just different to me. And then whenever I told you about how he walked by the back of his truck, it was odd. And then now all of a sudden I find out, you know, the next day, that his girls are gone and there's a missing persons report and everything mm -hmm. for him and nobody's heard nothing from him. You know, I'm a father. If my wife was gone and everything like that, I'd be freaking out. You oh, know? yeah. And, you know, he's just like, hey guys, I gotta go. You know, it wasn't like necessarily like a panic whenever he took there's off. There's no urgency day. to it. You know, but he's like, hey, you know, I, I just gotta go. And that's all he said. Because he rolled down his window and he pulled up to Chad McNeil's pickup that day. And he's like, hey, guys, I gotta go. You know, something's not right at home. And then he drove off. How did he drive? And he just pulled away normal. It wasn't like he was in a fire rush, you know. Mm -hmm. If I had my friends calling me and telling me, you know, or my wife's friends, that my wife was missing and my four kids weren't at home, I'd be freaking out, honestly. Head over metal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> <clears throat> Why did you park there? Because that's where I seen him park. Okay. And when the... Well, the water guy approached you. Why didn't you just keep looking around? Like you well, when, well, after he approached me and everything, because I was looking at the clock, because I need to be off somewhere close to the time frame, like two thirty-ish and stuff like that. Okay. So I can actually get home, because I live in Greeley, mm -hmm. and from Greeley to Surrey is a heck of a long drive, you know. And my wife babysits and everything else, so 
I want to get home whenever it's close to time because I'm not trying to milk the clock, give me extra overtime or anything like that. Right. So after he approached me, we talked for, you know, just a couple minutes and everything like that. He told me that if he found my crest ranch, that he'd put in the tank battery for me. And that was it. I got right back in my pickup. I drove around slowly to the location, you know, drove around the edge of the location right here. I just drove around right here, okay. you know, and then just went ahead and took off. Okay. Why didn't you tell him the truth? Because I didn't want to tell him that I was searching for any kind of sp suspicious things on location. What would have been wrong with that, though, if you had just said that? Well, I know, but I mean, at the time, whenever I was approached, that's what I said, honestly. Okay. I mean, I'm not here to lie to you guys, you know. I'm up front and honest about it. Obviously, you guys knew I was there, and I've got no problem telling you exactly why I was on location. Okay. So. Um. Did you talk to your wife about this on, uh, Monday when you got home? Well, yeah, because Shanann and uh, Juanita, you know, do the Thrive thing. Because mm -hmm. Juanita's a promoter as well, but she's never even hit her 4K on that. You know, and it just doesn't feel right. You know, for those girls just to disappear and Shanann to disappear, and she's such a public person and everything like that. So the wife was worried about them. She wanted to make sure that they were going to be okay as well. What was your conversation about? What, tell me not necessarily about tell me what was your conversation like were you were you guys you know convinced something had happened or just a little bit concerned well we were concerned because i mean it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities if they were having issues you know and she wanted to leave if that was the case for her to take the girls because i figured she would mm -hmm. you know and go ahead and go off to a friend's house because he told me that he thought shenan had went to a friend's house that morning so, Chris told you that? Yeah, it wasn't nothing out of the norm, you know. Like, she goes over to Prince house and stuff all the time. But that's what I told my wife. I was like, well, I don't know if she took off, went to a friend's house, you know, whatever the case. And then later on in the day, we found out the cell phone was still there, you know, and everything, the purse, all that kind of stuff. And then it just didn't start adding up, you know. You never want to think that one of your coworkers would be capable of doing something like that to a person, you know, anything. And then... So at what point do you start to think that um, Chris has done something? Well, the only part I start to think would be Wednesday. Because I drove out to location. You know, I wasn't out there very long on Tuesday. I didn't see anything out of the norm while I was there. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't look around. You know, I just got back and I picked up and drove off. And then Wednesday, I didn't text him at all. Nothing. I didn't, you know, try to check on him, anything. And then, okay, then Wednesday would be the day that you guys called me, what, mm -hmm. roughly around 10 o'clock? Yes, so, that, I think it was. Yeah, and then I come back to the office and have a talk with you, John. Were you out at this location ever again after Tuesday? No, sir, I wasn't. Never again. Okay. Do you know who else has been out at that location um, since then? Cody Roberts was out at that location on Tuesday. Tuesday? He had, to, he had to do something out there. I think Cody Roberts was out there, though. Do you remember about yeah. what time? No, sir, I don't. That's just from Cody talking to me. Okay. Telling me that he was out of location. Okay. Yeah. What about Melissa or Chad or anybody like that? Did they ever go back to 319? Well, I think Melissa would have been back out there because Melissa's been chatting with Cody. Okay. Because Cody starts um, automation cross training next week. Okay. So that's the whole reason why Melissa's out there anyway. Right. Because she's not the normal operator. She's just a trainee that just got signed off on her SOPs, standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. And then now we're feeling comfortable enough to let her run a route and see how she does. Okay. So that just happened to be the particular route which she drew. Hmm. Okay. Would there be any reason for anybody to drive out here in the weeds? Out no, sir. Right There's no the reason at all for anybody okay. to do that. Is that um, is that permitted? Do you guys get no, busy for that? No. Yeah. You like whenever you're out of Sorby Ranch, if you read that sign, it's posted mm -hmm. by that guy. Oh yeah, it's got the you rules on it. On the ranch <laughs> road. Sorry. You don't want to be caught outside of those ranch on you know on the leash roads mm -hmm. that are out there because you will get your butt ripped. Yeah. I mean, most of our landowners that we have are like that. Yeah, sure. You know, even Mr. Batting is that way. Okay. Anything else that we haven't talked about regarding any of this stuff um, that you can think of that we need to cover? You would either think it's not related or it's frivolous or... Anything else you can think of? You know, suspicions, just rumors, um, anything else you can think of? Right. Well, I'm trying to go through my head on everything that I could have said to him that day. I mean, 
through all this stuff that's going on, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember, but I do, another thing, um, that morning, he told me they were having issues and everything like that, but, was um, it Monday morning? Yes. Yeah, you know, he said, yeah, they we're having some issues and everything, and, you know, he's like, well, her wedding ring was laying on the counter. That's what he told me, that the wedding ring was on the counter, and I was like, why would she leave her wedding ring on the counter? He's like, well, I guess that she's just through with me. I don't know, you know, but he sounded hopeful that they could work things out, you know, so that didn't, you know, necessarily bother me at all. You know, he just told me that the wedding ring was laying on the counter. Counter where, do you say? No, I don't know if it was a kitchen counter, sir, or their dining room table, because they're right there next to each other. Did he say anything about, you know, hey, this is going to be hard on the kids, um, you know, anything like that? No. He never spoke of his girls. Never did? No. Hmm. Like, 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 like he said it. that they didn't uh, go to school or whatever at CC and Bella, because I don't know if they had like a daycare or something that they go to every day, but he said, yeah, she didn't take them to daycare and uh, she didn't go to a doctor's appointment. That was it. That's all he ever spoke of the girls. But he just told me that him and Shanann had had issues and everything, and that's why I figured why, because she didn't get in until late Monday morning or Sunday night, whenever she got in. Mm -hmm. And I figured that they just couldn't sleep, honestly, is the reason why he looked the way he looked. I never put things out of sorts, you know, or even would have thought about things being out of sorts until nobody heard from her. Right. You know, and she's not that type of person at all. Does he generally talk about his girls on a day-to-day -day basis? Um. Here and there, if they get to go do something, okay. you know, um, he loved playing with them and everything. Uh, uh, last pictures I've seen anyway of the girls, other than one of us, you know, I seen them on Friday with him. They were happy, laughing and everything, when we met in Fort Lupton. And, uh, you know, like the trip that they took out to the beach in North Carolina, you know, they always post stuff like that, you know. And, you know, for the most part, if anybody asked him about his kids, he would just light up, you know. They were like the center of his world, you know, it's what it seemed like, you know, but now, you know, what we know now, obviously that must have not been the case. Because any father that loves their children could never do something like that. So, I'm just blown away with this, and I mean, I know me going out to location on Tuesday does not look good upon my part. And I told the guy I was looking for my wrench, but I had that sick feeling in my stomach, okay, we haven't heard anything from her. If I can find anything out on that site where I could tell authorities, you know, something about it, that, you know, we could find out what happened, you know. I was praying to God that that wouldn't be true because that's a guy I worked with for two and a half years. Hey, you he's know? your buddy. Yeah, I mean, I would consider him a friend, you know. We didn't hang out outside of work hardly at all. I went down to his house twice for thrive parties, like I told you guys before, and then I met him at Fort Lupton because he asked me to try to put some programs on the fire stick for him, and I said, okay. That was the only reason why we met, and it was a brand new fire stick straight out of the box. And I handed it back to him on location that month. Hmm. So, okay. yeah, okay. Now, just understand that we had come across this information about you being on site on Tuesday, right? And it, you know, it just just one of these loose ends that we need to no, tie up. No, I, I understand and, that. You know, you know, that's why I said I had no problem to come down and talk to sure, you. Sure, no problem. I, and I appreciate that. You know, and, and I think you, you, know, you pretty well told me uh, that you recognized that something was wrong. And you, know, you put a few things together that, that's, yeah, that's it tripping just seemed your like something suspicion. Was off. That's why one of the first things I brought up to you guys is, yeah, okay, we're at the 319. Uh -huh. That was the site that I met him on. I got a map out of my truck. Anything I can do to help. I went and got you guys a map so you guys could take pictures of it or whatever. You called me and asked if we'd go out to serve your ranch together. I said, yes, sir. Yep. You know, I didn't hesitate. And I drove straight from County Road 37 and 52 where I received your phone call straight to Hudson and waited there for you until you guys arrived on location. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I wanted to help. Yeah. No, and I didn't I, know it was going to turn out this way. No, and I appreciate it. We appreciate you know, that. But, you know, and obviously you, you thought something was up because, you know, that wasn't adding up. Yeah, I mean... I, like, I pay attention to a lot of things. I mean, I've, I've got like ADD, you know, I notice stuff that's just different, you know, that a lot of people just kind of gloss over. But I've got so much that runs through my mind all the time, I don't remember everything. But then Chad and I started talking about the day that we were on that location, and that's whenever I remembered all that stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have a meeting with those gentlemen today. 
I'll tell them everything that I know, just to see if I can help out in any way, shape, or form. Because, I mean, I, I can't believe what happened. Yeah. That's absolutely terrible. And then to read on number seven or something like that, the, the tanks were involved with that too. You know, possibly. I don't know if that's the truth or not. And I don't know if you guys can't say that's part of the investigation, but I was standing right there by those tanks, you know. And if I was that close to that, that blows my mind. It honestly does. I don't, I don't even know how to process this. You know, I was starting to feel better a little bit, talking to the counselor a little bit. I didn't talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. We talked to him in the group, you know. And my buddy Tony Brown, he was bawling. You know, Chad McNeil was visibly upset. I'd been crying most of the night once I found out the news. And I don't know. I mean, anything I can do to help you guys, I'm more than willing to. Yeah, we appreciate that. I just don't know. This is absolutely horrible. I've never been a part of this in my life. I've never been in trouble in my life, you know. I don't have any experience with talking to officers and, or nothing. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and understand, we're not accusing you of it. Right, yeah. You know? I mean, but I know it looks we just, terrible. It's just one of those loose ends we need to tie up. Yeah. It's just one of those loose ends we need to tie up. I can no, say, no, I understand. Come back so. and I can say, yeah, he told us about, you know, X, Y, and Z, and this is why he was there. Yeah. You know? I mean, because yeah. I want to be honest with you guys. Yeah, and we appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, did did, did uh, Anadarko bring in the counselor for you guys? They did. Uh, it was a gentleman. It was an older gentleman. I don't remember his name. And I've got the paperwork that he gave us for. We have like a counseling hotline mm -hmm. that we can call if we need any help. And I believe he was here yesterday. As, or sorry, today is Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's here today as well. Yeah. Okay. Because we had our meeting yesterday morning, and he sat and talked to us for about an hour. You know, and then our boss came in and talked to us and. He said, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to, you know, be able to say anything to you guys or anything about what had happened because was it, it was Wednesday night, right, that it came across the news that he had confessed. Is that correct? Yeah, that's yeah, late, late, late okay. Wednesday night. Yeah, late Wednesday night because yeah. I was enough to sleep and then Tony Brown calls me and he's bawling his eyes out. Yeah. And I said, this can't be true. And then we pulled it up and we seen that it was true. And my wife cried unconsolably for an hour and a half. I was trying to calm her down. I mean, it's just been tough on everybody. Yeah. So yeah. I can't imagine the way that those families feel because they've been absolutely ripped apart. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. You know, and then to find out that she was pregnant with a little boy. Yeah. They invited me to their gender reveal party, you know, and then it got deleted. I didn't know who deleted it or nothing, but it just, you know, no gender reveal party. Because I believe that was supposed to take place on the 16th. <coughs> Speaking of that, do you know who Nicole Utef you? Other than seeing her on the news, sir, for the interview that she yeah. did. Yeah. That's the only person. That's, that's the only way you know who that is? Oh, okay. Well, the other person, that Nicholas, that you guys have got going. Nicholas. Uh, well, you know how you guys, but the interviews that you guys have seen on, online, he's a bald gentleman. And in this interview on the news, he's sitting on a park bench with his wife right next to him. Mm -hmm. That was a gentleman I was telling you about that Chris run with all the time. Okay. That he was running together trying yeah. to get 5K. Yeah, yeah. okay. Did yeah. you talk to him? Okay. But no, I didn't know any of the other Thrive group outside of any of that. Okay. Because the, the Thrive party that we went to, we built a vision board, which I still have in my house and my wife still has her. Because you're supposed to put your goals and cut out pictures and all that. So we done that with them. We ate supper with them. But like I said, that was, you know, like February-ish or something, you know? Yeah. Because I just met Shanann for the first time at our Anadarko Christmas party. This most recent one? Yeah, the last year's Christmas party. You know, and I don't know what date that was or anything, sir, but, you know, because I, I text Chris and everything because we've been working together, you know, long enough and he wanted to sit by my wife and I. So we hollered at them. I got to meet Shanann, you know, and found out how bubbly her personality was and just how awesome she was. You know, and then I guess she had lupus and by taking five, it was able to help her, you know. Yeah. And so my wife is suffering from acid reflux and everything and she said, well, that might help you. So I got my wife on Thrive and she's been doing better ever since, you know. And I think Shanann for that because Wayne had to take medications all the time and just weren't helping her, you know? So. Just, yeah, it's a terrible circumstance no matter how you look at it. It is bad. I mean, the only other situation that I've ever been close to that would even resemble this at all, which it doesn't, would be my dad's passing. And that's the closest I've been to anything like that. I've been pretty fortunate in my life not to have anybody I know ever have any serious trouble, you know, or nothing like that. or anybody else that I know personally pass you know all my friends are still alive you know by the grace of God thank God for that uh -huh. but 
to have something like this happen for the guy that I spoke with every freaking day for two and a half years, you know, and then just to go like that. And like I said on Friday, when I met him, he seemed fine, man. He was laughing, smiling, you know, he went to the console and uh, it might still be in the console of that vehicle. They had gum, like little um, bubble gum deal. It was white and uh, it was like tangerine. And he gave it to each one of his girls and he asked me when I liked a piece of gum. And I took a piece of gum from him.